Goombas. What's up, gamers, Goombas, and Gonzo Bonzos, Gabagools, and all in between? It's your boy, Gamer Goomba, Gonzo, Goombalini, Gamaguna, Luke, followed with the other Gamer Goombas, Brendan, and Marcos Riggs, the Goomba Gonzo, Big Goombalini, Gamagunza, Goomba Dabble, Gabagool, Goombalini, Gobble, Gobble, Gok. Bring you episode two of Gamer Goomba's podcast, a podcast where we talk about Nintendo, Nintendo Nintendo related things, fan fiction, Nintendo related fan (laughs) fiction, and Nintendo related things. Yeah. How are you boys doing today? Pretty good, but you just gave me flashbacks to Riggs' Princess Peach dream with that fan fiction talk. <laughs> aye, aye. Wait, what? He's already gonna have to He's already gonna have to do it. I'll just bleep it. Just bleep Hold it. Up. Hold up. What are you doing? Princess Peach. Oh, fuck. See, look, now we're gonna have to tell the story and you're gonna have to bleep this part <laughs> out. You can keep it in. Just bleep it. So basically, remember we had a group chat senior year and you had this dream oh, that. Okay. Remember we played the game and it was like with the cartoon characters or like the characters from Nintendo? Like, which one would you like pick? You know, which one you yeah. thought was like your waifu? And Rig was like, <laughs> I would draw my trousers. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, 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 and I was about <laughs> Princess Peach. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, guys, uh, Princess Beat. <laughs> what y'all been up to, bros? Gamer what you, Goombies. What have you guys been playing? What, come on, come on, Nintendo Ninten nerds. What have you been up to? What have you been playing? All right, so I got three games on my list today. I got the Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection, but I feel like me and Brendan should get into that in later terms. I'm always playing Switch and Shoot, that one game I talked about last episode. I'm always hopping into that every now and again, trying to mm-hmm. raise my high score, trying to get to different sectors. But uh, yeah, I did something that I never thought I would do, guys. You bought a dating sim? Close. You started playing The Sims? Close. What? <sighs> I don't know how to explain this to y'all, but like, there was a sale on the PS4, right? And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so I got the Kingdom Hearts games. Oh, shit. That's fucking Bro, sick. Bro, $30 for every single Kingdom Hearts. Get out. Where? That's kind of horny. It was like on the eShop. It's like all in one package. I've never played a Kingdom Hearts game. And I don't know. I feel like... Did you play Yeah, I played the first one for about uh, an hour, two hours. How was it? It's It sort of holds up and it sort of doesn't. Like it's very archaic in the gameplay and like the... I don't know, the level design and like the worlds that you're traversing in. The missions are kind of redundant. But that's like the beginning. So like... I'm not really into the the full meat of the game yet, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm excited to go through all of them and uh, kill myself afterwards. <laughs> God, <laughs> how many hours of gameplay is spread across all those games? Like, how long do you think it's going to take you to beat all of them? Hundreds. Jesus. Like, if I don't like them, I'm just going to say fuck it and not do it. But I just want to get to Kingdom Hearts three, just because that game looks appealing from a visual standpoint. Is that the one that Cloud is in? I think that's Kingdom Hearts two, maybe. Yeah, but what y'all been playing? I'll go because um, I'm the most important Goomba. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Three main games I've been touching. Still Breath of the Wild, always. I've been learning Breath of the Wild too. This Jam for Ooh, the Switch. I, I like it's, that game. I love this Jam, and I'm so sad that it's like a dead yeah, game. Yeah, right. I started playing Pokemon Sword for the first time. I've been doing Jackbox party games on my stream. And I have that. This is all on my Switch. Fire. I tried. I played the 2D All Stars. Nice. Um, and then on non Nintendo, I'm still playing Persona Five Royal on my uh, PlayStation Four. Damn, you jumping through hoops. Actually, always. You've been covering so much ground. Mm. That's like a wide, very wide variety of games. Facts. That's what we do here, Brendan. What's your We're not amateurs? What's the favorite one you've been playing so far? What's the one you're sticking with? Persona Five Royal is amazing. I hope I hope they release really Scramble to the to the I, Switch in the. I think the West. it's on a Japanese eShop. It is, but I don't speak Japanese. You don't? No, I wish. Brendan, you speak Japanese too, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Kira taught me. All right, I've had enough of you, Brendan. Stop right there. No, we're not doing this. <laughs> we're ending the we're ending the lies today. Episode two, no lies. No kiet. But let me get back to the Switch to talk about. This jam on the Switch, really fun. Especially if you have a pro controller, like, really good. You can use the two Joy-Cons together, but that's like, eh. 
the online is dead though like this this jam completely died like i'm pretty sure the devs stopped like developing it patching things so it sucks but like if you have friends to play with like lo locally offline or if you have a friend that has the game you can just play a private match it's really good like really really good i got that game um, for ps plus one month and yeah me and my brothers would play that a lot that game was really cool it's a good game i hope they make like this jam too like too much jam like too jam too furious you know something. uh you know the game wind jammers yeah so i feel like this jam has a lot of inspiration tied to wind jammers what's wind jammers sure but it's like this jam but 2d old oh i've type. seen this i just looked it up i yeah. didn't know that its name was that like i've i've seen wind like... jammers okay <laughs> <laughs> not enough out of you brendan <laughs> wait what'd you say anyway back to yeah thing. I started Pokemon Sword because they're releasing the eight. They're starting to release the eight Pikachu's with the different Ash hats now. So of course I want them. Mm. Um, it's pretty fun. Like I like Pokemon, but I'm definitely casual. Mm. I'm having fun with it. I don't really care how the graphics look. It's a Pokemon game. I'm not like I don't have high expectations. Is that what the complaint of Pokemon Sword and Shield is? The graphics? That's what one of them is. They're like, oh, the fucking trees, bro. And then like it's fine. Like, I thought I think that game looks pretty cool looking. Yeah, it's fun. It's pretty fun so far. I'm like barely in. I haven't even reached the first gym yet, so I'm like barely oh, okay. in. Mario 2D All Stars, really fun. But again, my like curse of platforming games, I'm just so fucking. <laughs> Which one bad. have you hopped into? I, ever, I just keep sliding in these Mario games. I just keep sliding and falling off. It's fucking awful. You heard? Um, Which games huh? have you hopped into in the 2D All Stars? All the, I touched oh, okay. all of them except for Super Mario Bros. One. I played the two, and the two is not really like it feels like a fucking RPG platform game. I don't know. There's just a lot of <laughs> yeah, weird it is like weird. The, the heart. I don't think it's actually the Super Mario Bros. Two from Japan. I was about to say. My friend was a big was a big Mario enthusiast. He said Super Mario Bros. Two in Japan is like really hard, and so they don't want to release it to the US because they're like, oh, it's gonna be hard. They're not gonna want to buy this. So I forget what the name of the other game was, and they just kind of like gave it a Mario skin. It's like Doki Doki Panic or some shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, that's that's so, so weird. So it's okay. It is. It is. The game itself is really weird. Everything about it is Mario really 3 is still perfect, though. Yes, I like 3. Yeah. I was on, like, World 1, Level 4, and I fucking kept dying because I kept sliding you, off. Is that the level the with the, the, the flying uh, platforms? Yes, and it just auto-scrolls. Yeah. I fucking I fucking hate it. I don't think I'm going to be able to beat it. That's like, a, that's, like, a personal problem. I love that. Um, Breath of the Wild. One of the big, like, you know, combat tech guys released his released a document a google doc on his on reddit there on the zelda sub or was it breath of the wild or zelda sub reddit um basically like giving a guide to like all the tech he does mm. and it's so fucking good and helpful and it's really fun to try out not everything is like super difficult to do but a lot of things are fun easy to do like you can do um you can like launch bombs using like the leaf and like make them go flying like super fucking far like really easily so a bunch of that stuff so that's cool that's something you should get into if you're if you're a Breath of the Wild fan, and you've already beat the game. That the game is like it will never die. There's just so much with the Bro, physics. Bro, the physics engine, going. like you could do so much with that shit. The physics engine in Breath of the Wild is what's gonna keep that game alive for like ever. And it plays like oh, I I played a little bit of uh, Zelda one again. I have a lot of problems with Zelda one, but again, it's like super old, so that's mainly my big problem with it. But same same yeah. feel like I don't know where I'm going. Like I don't really care. Like I'm having fun exploring. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're we're born in two thousands and shit, so like, yeah, we're used to different type of game design. Mm -hmm. And then what's the other game? Oh, Jackbox Party Party Pack Three for the Switch. I've been playing on my stream. That's actually really fun. Is Party Pack Three the game that we played at uh Brendan's crib? I don't know, but it's the one. You know the one, the T-shirt game. You have to make T-shirts. That's the one I like doing a lot. That one. That one makes me want to act up. That one gets really aggressive really fast. Shut up, Brendan. Oh my god. <laughs> Brendan, <laughs> Brendan, what have you been playing? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I wasn't done. Oh, Brendan. My bad, Luke, my bad. Brendan. I didn't relax, cut you off. Relax, Brendan. And then last game, I've been playing some Smash. And you know, we just got released today that there's going to be the new fighter reveal tomorrow. But a short video. It's going to be a Wait, short really? video in a, in a brief talk. What? You didn't see that? Are you, are you on Twitter? Are you on Twitter? Nah. Nah, I'm not, I'm not on that tweet shit. Oh my god. Alright, so let me tell you what's happening. Because if yeah. you go on Twitter right now, the three things that are trending are Smash, or sorry, four things. Smash, Geo, yeah. Sora, Crash. Oh, Phoenix Wright is trending now too. So let me read you the Nintendo of America tweet. The next hashtag Smash Bros. Ultimate DLC Fighter will be revealed tomorrow at 7am Pacific Time. 
Holy the video gosh. presentation will be roughly three minutes long, followed by a brief message from director Masahiro Sakurai. Tune in here tomorrow. Okay, baby. Mm-hmm. What y'all think? Who's going to be the fighter? Um, honestly, I'm down for more first person. Like this is like a this is like a hot take I think in the Smash community, but like I want more first party characters. I know everyone's like I would like Crash and like Sora and like Phoenix Wright is like this is cool. Some people want Master Chief, whatever Minecraft is, yeah, whatever. This, like this is cool. I want more characters from like first party Nintendo games. Like another Pokemon trainer would be cool. With, like three different the three starters. That would be crazy. I would like to see another Zelda character because there's not that many Zelda characters actually. Zelda characters it feels saturated because there's like three links. But then it's just Sheik, Zelda, mm. and Ganondorf as, like, what else? It's like Who would you want? Skull Kid, Midna. I would, right now, Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity. I want yeah. Young Impa in Smash Bros. She'll make me that's my, that's my forever girl. Okay. Brennan, what about you? Who do you think is going to be the next fighter? Probably Piranha Plant 2. All right, Brennan. <laughs> Why, Brennan? I'm gonna, next time I see you, I'm going to slap the shit out of you. <laughs> Not only do you have the hottest takes in this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> the shit. I got a feeling it's a Goomba. Oh, a gamer Goomba. A gamer they don't have Goomba. Arms. They use items. Yeah, that move set would be very restrictive. It's just headbutt. All their specials, <laughs> all their attacks. I hate you all. I actually have no idea, and I'm glad I have no idea. It's gonna be more. Yeah, hard. yeah, me too. Watching the trailer tomorrow with like no idea. I hope that shit does not leak. I hope that shit does not yeah. leak. Yeah. Because that shit gets me like, oh, I, I know who it is now. It would have to happen in like the next few hours to get leaked. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty dope, though. I'm excited. Yeah. So you guys, that's why you guys need me. I got the breaking news. The the Luke leaker. Ugh. Brandon, <laughs> Brandon, what have you oh, been playing? Not much. I've been pretty busy with school. I really only had time to play 64 like a little bit. And, like, occasionally play Smash with my family when, like, I'm trying to distract myself from homework. <laughs> Understandable. Online learning sucks, man. Don't listen to him. He just spends his time vaping. <laughs> nah. nah. I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Brendan's message that online uh, learning's boof. And uh, I dropped out of school. But uh, I'm going to pull back up when shit gets normal. Oh. All right. Are you ready for the eShop drop? Y'all going straight to the eShop drop? I'm down. I'm ready. So we each give our gamer Goomba stamp of approval for one eShop game that came out? No, I have a handful. I have a lot to say about this. Honor. Let me just say, though, real quick. Honorable mention, Jump Rope Challenge. It was going to be a temporary release. It's staying because that shit is so fire. Let's go, baby. I actually like that game. I've never tried it yet, but yeah, I got to get active. It felt silly at first, but I was like, it was a fun silly. <laughs> It was a fun silly. I know all about the fun silly. Uh-huh. So, I've never been one for the dating sims, right? But uh oh, in my moment of weakness, I purchased a game not too long ago called Gaokao Love 100 Days. Wow. It's a Chinese dating sim. And I know, I know what you're thinking. Dating sim, it's pretty interesting. At first, I was like, oh, you know, this is just memes, right? Like playing for the jokes. But then I got invested with the characters. Uh oh. And I was like, holy <laughs> fuck. I was like, yo. Muxin ain't shit. I'm trying to be with Xiao Han. But I ended up losing. I didn't know you could lose in a dating sim. Um, I ended up getting sent to military school. And then my uh, <laughs> main character got really depressed. And then, like, the screen, like, turned red and faded. It was, like, the end. So I got one, oh, of, yeah. I got one of the shitty endings. So it's kind of upsetting. I'll probably play it again. How long was the playthrough? For me, it was, like, a month. Time-wise. Time-wise. Oh. Minutes, hours. Shh, Brendan, let me think. Let me think. Actually, let me. Ah, like, Brandon didn't it. say anything. So maybe like, oh no, sorry. Played for ten hours or more. So yeah, it was. I put about fifteen hours in before I got booted, and I and I lost. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know you could lose dating sim. Anyway. So you so you dedicated yourself to that game for a bit. Yeah, I what like I became the main character. I wanted to be. I wanted to be with Xiao Han and not Muxin. You get any? Uh, get any suck? All right. Next question. <laughs> next game next game that i'm just gonna i'm just gonna touch talk a little bit about it's not an indie game but it's an underrated game mario in rabbits kingdom battle i just Ooh. had to bring this up again because i think it was on sale not too long ago and like when i got it, it was on sale for 15 bucks i even got to play a little bit with brendan it's dumb fun it's so good that was a really cool game see it's like <laughs> it's like mario slash fire emblem slash rabbits literally i couldn't imagine a, a better trio a better threesome than that 
Except this one right here, Gamer Goombas. Oh. So, Gao Kao Love 100 Days gets the Luke Goomba seal of approval. Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle gets the Luke and Brendan Goomba Gonzo seal of approval. See, I just want to comment on the Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. I I got that game for Christmas one year. Mm-hmm. Right? I was I was digging it. I got into the later uh later i wouldn't say levels because it's like a very linear game you're just going to each like place where you battle and so i got to this like spooky type of land and it just got hard as fuck for me and i'm not really i'm not really a strategy type of guy but this was like difficult in the sense where like my brain was hurting to the point where like yo where do i where do i put fucking rabid peach and (laughs) my luigi keeps dying and oh shit mario just got headshotted by like some fucking obese rabid like she was popping off and i didn't i didn't know how to like continue did you have any trouble with that honestly that sounds like a personal problem like that's something i would tell to a therapist <laughs> i'm not qualified that's, that's true <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> anyway marcos tell us what is your eShop drop all right so there's a very special game that uh me brendan luke and a few other people have oh my god that are dear to our hearts it's it's very it's a very similar game to Smash Bros. It's oh. called Rivals of Aether. And this game just got dropped on the eShop like not too long ago, like maybe a week ago. And this is the definitive edition of Rivals. It's like a sprite based 2D platform fighter like Smash. It's very refined, like the the presentation's very uh It's not clunky. Yeah, it's not cheap. It's very clean. Yeah. The controls feel really great. I don't know. The fighters are really different and really weird. There's some DLC fighters from indie games like Shovel Knight, Ori in the Blind Forest. Like they got some hitters in there. Mm-hmm. And the gameplay is very uh sticky. Like I said before, it's very similar to Smash. Like there's other games that try and replicate Smash's formula, but I think Rivals does it the best for what I've experienced. So mm-hmm. yeah, Rivals uh-huh. gets my gamer Goomba stamp of approval. I just mm-hmm. stamped it. That was the noise. I stamped it. You know what I mean? That was amazing. That was beautiful. But a game that I will be on the lookout for, whether I'm playing it soon or whenever, Hades. Oh, yeah. We need to shout out Hades. Shout out Hades. I've seen a lot shout- of good things. Yeah. So I want to I wanna just shine light on Supergiant Games, the developers of Hades. They made uh, Bastion, Transistor. They made Pyre. And all of these games are beautiful aesthetically. They're all drop-dead gorgeous. They're a very small indie studio, but they make quality-ass games. And Hades is their newest game that just came out on Switch and PC. It was in early access for like a few years, but it just dropped its final version uh, maybe a week ago, right? Yeah. I heard it has some good lore as well. Yeah, I heard the story. Like, dungeon crawlers and like roguelikes are very lacking in story. And yeah, Supergiant games really excel in that field with any of their games. And so to see Hades follow with that is very exciting. And I need to definitely get into that. Yes, you love to see it. So we'll sure. we'll have to come back and visit that at a later date. Yeah. So uh last episode Brendan was talking about Pokemon Sword and Shield uh DLC debacles. And so I want Brendan to take this one, the first one. Oh wait, 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 wait. Before we start, we got fucking we got eleven news stories on the list today. We got fucking We got fucking we got eleven freaking news on the Gamer Goomas news list today. Now let's go. Waste no time, Brendan. Lead us in. Brendan, let's go, baby. All right, we're starting off with the Pokemon Sword and Shield expansion, uh, the Crown Tundra. Uh, this is actually a pretty big expansion because they're finally releasing all old legendaries and a few new Galarian forms, which appear super cool. I'm actually a big fan of the new Galarian forms. They actually seem super, super, super sick. The Galarian is like the region of Sword and Shield, right? Exactly. It's the new okay. region. The newest Galarian form that, like, is huge is that, like, they're talking about, uh, they already had a a Galarian Slowpoke, and now they just came out with a Galarian Slowking, who is Poison and Psychic. He looks really cool, but personally, I'm most excited about the two new Regis that they're dropping. They're dropping an Electric Regie and a Dragon-type Regie, which are just going to be super cool. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, that's brand new. They've been on. Uh, are you, are you talking about like Reggie Ice? Yeah, Reggie Ice, Reggie Rock. No, there's I'm, Reggie. I'm talking about the former head of Nintendo of America. <laughs> oh, well, he, well, he is dear to my heart. I'm talking about the different Reggie, who is um electric. He's a big ball of electricity. He's kind of cool looking. And Reggie Drago, 
All right, you gotta you gotta make a better name. You gotta make a better name. Yeah, I can agree with that. But like to be fair, the other ones are literally Reggie, yeah. Pop, Reggie, like, <laughs> Reggie Steel. That's so terrible. But yeah, I love no, it though. I'm, I love it. But yeah, I am most most excited about the new Galarian forms of the original three Mystic Birds. They're dropping a Galarian Moltres, Articuno, and Zapdos. Whoa, this is yeah. this is big. Yeah, Zapdos is a uh, flying fighting type. Moltres is a flying dark type. And the Articuno is a flying psychic type. And they completely revamp the skins to represent their new typing. And they look Art- so cool. Articuno sounds fire. I always stick with Zapdos, but Articuno is psychic? Are you joking? I know, I know. It looks really, really cool. They gave her like a, a, like a like light purple skin and made her much more sleek and like less icy block looking it's like it's really cool looking oh snap are the red all three of those designs are like i think they might be my new favorite like besides toxtricity which is like the coolest pokemon added in that game these might be the new coolest forms added in the gala region i just looked at them they're all look fire right brendan mr pokemonzo mr professor oak is the name mr professor (laughs) mr professor coke snip (laughs) <laughs> is, the name, is the name Reggie short for Reginald? Like, is it Reginald Gigas? Reginald Ice? I have no idea You're how they got fan. the Reggie name. Big, big fan. Reggie Fees and Gigas. Reggie Fees and Gigas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep going with the news. <clears throat> Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Have you ever, have you, have you guys ever seen the Pokemon? <laughs> I was stuttering a lot right there. Have you guys ever seen the Lucario Pokemon movie? Yes. Yes, yes. Do you know that moment <laughs> where... <laughs> I, know, I know exactly what you're talking about. I just wanted to bring that up. He's like, Reggie Eyes, no! And Reggie Eyes is like... <laughs> <laughs> if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about... Reggie Eyes, Reggie Eyes, Reggie Eyes. Oh, Reggie Eyes, Reggie Eyes, Reggie Eyes, Reggie Eyes, all right, Brendan, keep going with this. I just want to say something about the Crown Tundra expansion. This frozen like land looks pretty dope. Yeah, it's definitely cool, especially since the last um, big drop was uh, an island themed. Mm. So it's like nice to get the contrast because you got the uh, like Galarian Slowpoke with like the cool new like that uh, the cool new like beach vibes, and you're getting like all these like beach aesthetics followed by like this new area that's massively like snowy it, it's a good contrast especially yeah. with like the new galarian forms like uh galarian did have some really cool new ice forms like uh galarian darmatian did come out really cool changing a fire type to an ice type like that fire yeah are you gonna get this because i know I you were really, opposed really to it in the la- it. last episode i know i am opposed to it but those new zapdos features like the, the new Bro. zapdos it looks so cool i love the new zapdos so much yeah i really want to get it We'll, we'll see. When is we'll this see. coming out? There's a lot of other October stuff. October 22nd. Oh, okay. October 22nd, bet. So, yeah, so I've still got some time to make my decision. And yeah. they're um dropping some new Pikachus in there, which do look cool as well. There we go. Um, For anyone who hasn't yet bought the game, they're coming out with bundle packs for this current expansion and the previous expansion with the original game for cheaper. So if you and haven't that- started your adventure yet, definitely hold off till this expansion drops before purchasing. Yeah, I'm definitely going to dive in that way. Luke, Shout out to how Pokemon. have you been enjoying the game so far? I bet to ask that. I got my starter. And then I'll yeah, who's, you pick. who's your starter? Well, I used I used my two profiles, right? So I picked the Grookey, and I named wait. him Grook. I named wait, him did, you, did you get sword or shield? Sword. I don't want sh- All right, let me tell you. If you pick shield, you're stinky. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> Damn, I was, I was looking forward to shield. Let me tell you something. You see that? I'm not. I'm not stinky. I'm not stinky. You see that dog on the front cover? The shield dog, bro. He has to turn his whole body just to look left or right. That shield thing is just not. Hey, at least shield is still tournament legal. At least it's not a good look. Look at this. Did you hear about that, Riggs? Bro, how's he gonna? How's he gonna bend his head down to eat when the other dog is just a badass dog holding a sword in his mouth? That's cool. That's cool. Marcos, did you hear about that? Nah, I didn't. What's up? The sword dog is like one of like the first like big Pokemon added in a while that's like completely banned from tournaments. Like there there have been bans before, but that sword Pokemon is just 
way too overpowered. It's completely banned at most tournaments. Do you know um, the types? I actually don't. I just know that like it has incredible attack ability and coupled with like sword stance, which is already an overpowered move, and like yeah. some speed up abilities, you, you just can't like get a hit on it before it'll one shot your entire team. Like it, it, <laughs> it's basically the uh Alpha Ruby and uh yeah. Omega Sapphire. Do you remember those games? Yeah. The nope. uh the uh the Rayquaza in those games is banned from tournaments as well for like basically the same thing because like that Rayquaza can like go into its Omega form without even having a whole held item. Like the you need the Spirit Orb to turn the Grout on into its primal form, but you can just yeah. turn the Rayquaza into its primal form without even giving it an item. So giving hmm. it an item that attacks first, its primal form and attacks first, GG. Yeah, banned from tournaments. Thanks. Banned from tournaments. Hmm. That's crazy. I'm not really in that tournament field. Are you guys with uh, Pokemon? I'm not very casual. Into it. I just kind of like. Do so no. I kind of like looking up like what is just like the most groundbreaking and like OP strats in tournaments at certain times because some of them are just insane. Like it's definitely interesting. My, yeah, I think my favorite Pokemon of all time is Ampharos. After reading about her in tournaments when I was like 12. Wow. Because like Ampharos, you can just I think it was platinum. You could just get like a basically one. She, she could one shot an opponent's team like almost every single time. You said Ampharos? Like, yeah, it was like that little like sheep Pokemon that stands yeah, yeah, yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing it. It's like a really weird Pokemon, but like with its like abilities and like certain like stats it had that were very unique to it, it was just overpowered in tournaments. This is a really weird evolution of what it was from. Like it was just yeah. a sheep. Yeah, yeah, it was I remember that one. Sheep now. directly into like it, it, like turned into a human. It was very weird. Yeah, enough of that pokey talk. Yeah, let's move on. Luke, yes, take do you like? Are you, are you still in Animal Crossing? Yeah, of course. Look, we already talked about this. Animal Crossing is a game you gotta take your time in. Yeah, you gotta go and smell the roses. You gotta blow kisses to your villagers. <laughs> and you gotta hit the ones you don't like on the head with with bats and axes and, and butterfly nets and fishing rods and umbrellas. Well, anyway. speaking of number two, then. <clears throat> Got a little carried away. Anyway, let's get into this Animal Crossing news. Animal Crossing New Horizons update now. Version scooby dooby hooby dooby No, it's just 1.5.0. <laughs> so this is, the, this is the, the update that everyone has been waiting for. The fall update. Growing pumpkins is back. You can grow pumpkins. Well, it's not back, but like fall is back. You can grow pumpkins, and you can use them to make, like, pumpkin-based DIY stuff. Then you have Halloween coming, so you're going to get candy, you know? So you better le- you're going to learn more DIY projects, so keep an eye for that. Then Halloween comes, and, of course, Jack, the guy with the pumpkin, you have to get the candy. Now you can revisit Dreams, and then they're going to add something for the Nook Link service in the, in the smartphone app that will let you, like, you could chat. You could use the smartphone as a keyboard to text in the Animal Crossing game, but now you can also use it to do reactions. That's a quick summary of everything. You you gonna dive into it? We could, but there's also a lot of things, so I'll just I'll like briefly dive into it. Yeah. The, pump, the pumpkins, the whole Halloween stuff is gonna be fun. In previous games, Halloween has always been like a good a good holiday for Animal Crossing. For sure. It's always been one of the more eventful things to do, and now with New Horizons having like the crafting stuff, which is like it's, it's, some people have mixed feelings about it. It's gonna be more fun. They're gonna add more things in addition to just the candy, and you know, getting candy, giving candy. You can now revisit dreams, which will be fun because, you know, the dream thing was like going to a friend's island or someone's island without actually being there. So like no one could steal your stuff or whatever. But if you still wanted to yeah. see someone's island, that was a nice option to have. And then the smartphone app thing I actually like because when I do play with friends and we're not on like a voice chat or something, which you can do through the Switch, the Switch uh, online smartphone app. Mm. It was nice to like text, use the my phone to text while still playing because it's, it's really typing on the Switch. Like, in Animal Crossing, is so slow. People, like, just say, like, half of what they mean because they don't have enough time. But I guess not everyone wants the app or not everyone might have a smartphone, especially if you're younger. Yeah. But overall, pretty good update. And then there's going to be more coming after um, Halloween for, like, Thanksgiving and Christmas. So that, that, that's the one I'm looking forward to the most. I think Animal Crossing is doing a good job of keeping that steady pace of content. For sure. Well, it depends who you are. There's people that play, like, 500 hours in one day. And then they're like, oh, my God, Animal Crossing has no content. But like uh, yeah, they're bugging they're yeah. tweaking yeah it's a good well uh speaking of uh you know content and then <laughs> oh, hours yeah. and content and... Oh, baby luke i i want you to take this one too baby 
I was never going to give anyone else a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity first gameplay footage. Oh, baby boy. During a TGS 2020 online stream, Koei Tecmo revealed first gameplay footage from Hyrule Warriors. The game looks so good. It looks like a, it looks like any other Hyrule, uh, like Warriors game, right? Mm. But like it is a little revamped. It is a little refined. At least, and especially like there's a lot of attention to detail. You can interact with the environment. Like in one one of the uh, clips where you see Link throw the the rune bomb, it explodes and it does knock over a tree. You know, a guardian does bust in through a wall. You see sort of the individual Bokoblins fighting like the individual soldiers. Like they will like not just follow like, you know, one hive mind. Like they have individual animations when fighting each other. And the Bokoblins just start bonking the like Hylian soldier on the head. It's really I I noticed that. That was pretty sick. It's nice to have what helps what helps add to immersion, I find, is everything, all these little moving parts. It's not just the whole, like the little. Yeah, for sure. So that that looks really good in terms of like how the game looks, how the game plays. Again, you know, time will tell. Game. But there are some cool elements. Like it seems like every character has some some form of the four runes, like stasis, bomb, cryonis, magnesis, maybe. So I think I think although it doesn't necessarily follow the canon per se, the canon will be sacrificed for gameplay, which it does look fun. Young Impa, oh my god, that's my new, that's my new crush. That's my. Oof, it's gonna make me blush. I'm gonna cry. She's, she's playable, right? Yeah, she's playable. She looks good. People are complaining that she looks like Paya. That, that's her grandma. I ain't, I ain't got no problem. <laughs> Don't even get me started. Anyways, There's, there was also some Daruk gameplay shown, right? At TGS. Yeah, there was a, there was all a bunch of gameplay shown. So we got yes. to see Link. We got to see Impa. I'll just keep it a little bit brief. We've seen some Mipha stuff from the early trailers that like before we couldn't tell it was gameplay because we didn't know. But now that we have the information, you can go back and be like, oh, this is for sure Mipha gameplay. So mm-hmm. everything looks really good. And what, we just have to wait like a little bit less than a month now. So I'm super excited. Brendan, how did you feel about this uh, gameplay? Did you see it? Yeah, I watched like I skimmed through it. I yeah, really like the clip of the uh, little uh, guardian that looked like an egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i also like took i like, didn't know uh, what was happening with that but i really liked that i hope yeah, that's like i hope that's like a pet we can have to like help us fight the monsters did you play the last warriors game no i haven't um so link like meets a fairy and like you know how link doesn't talk so they use the fairy to talk through link i'm pretty sure the little guardian egg is going to be that sort of navi fairy companion character thing that's so cool so that, that'll be fun. And yeah, that cutscene with Impa is really good. So you see Impa running around the corner being chased by a bunch of Bokoblins. Looking looking cute. <laughs> and she has the Sheikah Slay in her hand. And she's like looking. Link is just kind of like chilling with the little egg. He sees the little egg. And he's like, hmm, what is that? And then he sees Impa hauling ass. She trips and stumbles. The fucking Sheikah Slay flies in the air. And it's like spinning in slow-mo. And there's this like really nice clean animation of Link grabbing it. Then like running with the sword to take him on. But as he grabs the Sheikah Slate, it activates and it corresponds with the little the little egg, the little guardian egg, the guardian egg. And then the tower just bursts from the ground. You know, Impa's like, oh, and then Link is like, hmm. And he's like thinking, he starts like putting two and two together, which is cool. We see like a inquisitive, like personality trait to Link that he's like thinking, like he knows he's not just dumb. He's not like a brainless character. Like he sees what happened and he's like looking at the egg and he's like, hmm. So like the egg can do something, right? And then the egg does that little whistle thing where its head pops up a little Sounding like Mario <laughs> and there's like butterflies around. It's very cute. I was about to say he he reminded me of like a Star Wars companion. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like that that's gonna be the homie in Age of Calamity. So I had I had a different reaction to be honest. Oh. Um. I'm I'm still in love with uh, the idea of Age of Calamity and just the story of the battle. We didn't know what happened and all that and the idea of fighting with all these characters but when i saw the gameplay and when i realized like the thing that i imagined in my brain wasn't what the game was what i was just hyping myself up too much i think and so when i saw the gameplay and i saw that it was a muso game not to the t because there's definitely zelda you know influence and all that but i think it's melded together pretty well but i just think that that gameplay i can't really get into and so i might tune into like a twitch stream like twitch.tv slash t-i-p-y-t-o-w-n i don't know oh you mean twitch.tv slash tippy town yeah i think i might have to uh just watch tippy town stream of age of calamity you know i think i might watch that too that's a good idea you know i might (laughs) i might sub too 
tier three. Yeah, I might, I might just donate like yeah, you know, two thousand dollars to his uh yeah, yeah. stream every single time he streams. Like, yeah, you guys, I don't you guys know. Too. You guys should too, for sure. <laughs> Luke, since you know Tippy Town best, do you know when he starts streaming the game? I mean, uh, Tippy Town's gonna be streaming it the day it releases. It releases on Friday, November twentieth. So it's gonna be an all day stream and coverage. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely tune into that. It looks good. I've always liked warrior style gameplay. I've always found it to be like, even though it's like really big, it feels fast paced because you're just like hacking and slashing. And like mm. in Breath of the Wild, the game itself, I never really got sick of combat. Like that's my favorite thing to do is just fighting stuff. For sure. So I'm, I know I'm gonna have a blast touching Age of Calamity. It's right now no downsides to it. Oh, the voice acting. Actually, this is one thing I did notice, which is really pedantic, but it did maybe not bother me, but it did make me go like, oh. Mm-hmm. It seems that the voice actors for Daruk and Mifa, based just based off like the trailer and listening, aren't the same. Uh oh. Which like Mifa's voice is fine, like eh, but Daruk's it sounded way goofier than like how he usually does. Yeah, you leak. Kind of. It kind of. What like, the? He sound he sounded like Barney <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I f- I think uh for Breath of the Wild that was one of the very few issues with with people that had uh with the game was the voice acting. I didn't mind it to be honest. I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, but my friend my friend hates it. I love it. I love it. I honestly I even think Link needs a voice. That would be cool. Cuz he's not, you know, he's not like he's not really so much a the fit your sh- like, you know, put your shoes in the character kind of player like. You don't, you yeah, don't, right? You don't, pick, you don't in this game, you don't pick his name. You just Link is an established person. He's more of like a Geralt from The Witcher, but he just doesn't talk. I think give him a give him a voice like how they gave Cloud in Final Fantasy VII Remake. He didn't talk a lot, but he did have a voice and like he yeah, did have some lines. I feel like Danny DeVito should voice Link. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna have to kill you all. <laughs> all right, all right. So Age of Calamity was shown. You know, look up that gameplay if you're interested, and uh, if you're not. Tune into Tippy Town stream of that on November twentieth when the game comes out. Day one release, playing digital lease. I'll have I'll have that uh, pre order bonus. Number four on the news today, uh, we got a Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase. Woo! Yeah, that's that's kind of the reaction I get nowadays too. <laughs> whenever I hear a Direct Mini colon Partner Showcase, I'm disappointed, but not for the same reasons you guys are. Well, let's get into it. So they started off with. A very vital announcement for a very niche group of players, Monster Hunter Rise. It's like an amalgamation of the previous games that came out on Switch, like Ultimate and like the 3DS games mixed with like that new next gen like Monster Hunter World type of gameplay combined into like a Switch exclusive. It looks really good. This game, I noticed it has a lot of influence from Breath of the Wild going back to that game, like the traversal of the dude just running up mountains with his dog companion he was just ziplining through like the sky with like a fairy or some shit i don't know but the traversal kind of reminded me of that breath of the wild sort of climbing aspect i've never played a monster hunter game but yeah me either i really enjoyed this mini direct i think this is the one i'm gonna jump into i like the other one what was it but uh yeah stories two wings of ruin the one that had like the cell shaded yeah so the second game that was announced was monster hunter or revealed was Monster Hunter Stories 2. So the previous Monster Hunter Stories was a 3DS exclusive, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's like Monster Hunter's take at Pokemon, to be honest. Kind of, yeah, something like that. And so with Stories 2, they're just fleshing that out on the Switch. And so if you're into those types of games, sort of like a Monster Hunter take on Pokemon mixed with like, I don't know, just the emphasis on like hatching eggs and stuff. You know what the cell shaded look reminded me of? What did it remind you of? Like, artistically it gives me like a nino kuni kind of vibe it gave me a nino kuni type of vibe too when i and saw like, it i was like what is this and, and I then i saw problems. like dragons and i was like oh okay i have some problems with nino kuni but not the art not the art like this, oh yeah for sure this game monster hunter stories 2 looks re- I, i'm looking forward to that i might actually play it yeah that game that game was a surprise too i didn't think monster hunter was gonna go like <laughs> with story too you know what i mean <laughs> And so after they announced those two games, they went with a, a litany of more partner showcase type of like publisher developer games that are going to come to the Switch. So no so no games strictly from Nintendo, but like games that are geared towards Nintendo audience and stuff. 
starting with fitness boxing two rhythm and exercise this game looks kind of weird i don't know if i don't know if that's uh a game that you want to play on your switch but if you want to uh like it's a it's a rhythm game mixed with exercise like we fit type the second game that was announced was disguise six defiance of destiny this is a this is a very infamous rpg series that is really like zany it's pretty weird it has really cool uh, art style but i don't know it's not for me the the third game that was announced launching on that day of the direct mini was hades like we talked about last time Mm -hmm. it had a really cool uh animation like trailer and then it went into gameplay afterwards and i was like oh bet and i heard a lot of uh, good things about the switch port of hades like i didn't think it was going to be optimized for the switch because of how uh great it looks on the pc but I've been hearing good things about it. You'd love to see it. Yeah, for sure. I was going to say, I think if we're, if you're doing the next game, I think it is. I thought you would be the most excited for this one. Ori and the Will of Wisps. But yeah, Ori and the Will of the Wisps was the last announcement that was like the one more announcement type for the Direct Mini. I think and we that was about it now just because even though it's the last, it was like big. big. No, it was, de- it was definitely one of the biggest announcements other than Monster Hunter. I felt like this was the the craziest surprise of the direct mini the freaking new like bundle edition they had with all the art whoa it just i was about to say that collector's edition looks very like thought out yeah this is it like this like was a, a planned popular. release yeah so if anyone didn't know ori ori is like a 2d metroidvania very beautiful series that was mainly exclusive to xbox and so xbox is starting to branch out of their exclusivity and start starting to uh bring their games to other platforms and they've ported Ori and the Blind Forest to the Switch and now they're bringing Ori and the Will of the Wisps which was like a release today type of deal same with Hades it's $30 on the Switch you could get it now and I definitely recommend both of those games they're beautiful 2D Metroidvania platformers or fire one of the best in their uh genres for like this gen yep I couldn't say it better myself and then we got a new few other games that were kind of uh just lacking in excitement in my opinion Whoa. empire empire of sin we got some like mobster 1920s strategy game i don't know i don't know how to feel about this game did you guys see this yes the the great gatsby the video game <laughs> <laughs> yeah for real another game that was announced was pga tour 2k21 some golf game if you like uh if you want to tee it off on the switch you could do it with pga tour 2k21 <laughs> coming out on uh oh it came out already september 25th so uh if you want to do that then go get it another game that was released or not announced not really oh my god i'm having an aneurysm <laughs> another game that was revealed for the direct mini was sniper elite 4 i like this series of uh games actually sniper elite is a really cool uh third person shooter series where you like gun down your enemies from far away and once you hit the trigger right the bullet goes in slow motion and like tracks where it hits like the hits the enemy like so like show the skeleton like ray of them getting their eyeball like severed by a bullet it's pretty cool there's been a lot of memes based off of that game for the oh, so you know what ones. i'm talking about yeah yeah so the last three games the first one was uh rune factory 5 this is a this is a RPG. This is a, sort of a dungeon crawler. I'm not really too familiar with Rune Factory, but I know people like it out there. So if it's your thing, uh, I'm glad you're happy. You another know? game. Another game was The Long Dark. This game. This game I had my eyes on for a minute now. It's a very cool, cell shaded looking game. It's a survival game in like the woods. There's a lot of uh, survival elements. Like I said, it was a. There's permadeath. There's like some wolves and shit that you gotta prevent yourself from dying you just gotta you just gotta survive out there in the cold like you need to take care of your breath and shit like you need to eat food you need to sleep it just looks really cool and the last game mm-hmm. balan wonderland is a mm-hmm. game from uh some sega developers who made uh nights into dreams a very weird sega saturn game that was very uh it's like it's from the sonic team who branched off and made their own type of game and now they're trying to make a 3D platformer with a very colorful, very, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. There's a lot of there's a lot of costumes and abilities that you could obtain with Balan Wonderland. It looks like a psychedelic trip mixed with a 3D platformer. I don't know. How, do, how did you guys feel about this direct mini partner showcase? I felt like it was pretty strong. I mean, I feel like certainly that all of these games, 
I, I'm not going to say they're going to be like groundbreaking, but I'm sure like they're going to be we- they're going to do well. And especially yeah. for like Monster Hunter, th- th- that's a very committed community. So that game's probably like most games for them, they eat up right away. And we'll find out whether they truly enjoyed it or hated it pretty rapidly after it's released. Mm. You know, my problem, I have a problem with Nintendo fans, like, only playing Mario, Zelda, Smash, and then they're like, there's no Nintendo games. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Games look pretty good. Monster Hunter looks great. You have to, like, sort of branch out and try the other ones. Ori's not going to be bad. That won't be a waste of your time or money if you buy Ori. And if it is, if you find it to believe that way, like, you need to do some, like, you need to do some looking on the inside. You need a soul search, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Hades, uh, again, we like we talked about it a bunch of times already. Like all these games look good. My only my only huge disappointment is we have yet to see Skatebird for the Switch, and it's supposed to come out, but then COVID and like delays, and I don't know what's gonna happen. And I just want I want to play Skatebird on the Switch, and I'm so disappointed that we've had so many indie partner showcases, but no Skatebird yet, and I just really want to play Skatebird. Yeah. Backing off of what Luke just said about Skatebird, yeah, there's a lot of uh, indie developers who have been having trouble, uh, I don't know, just COVID fucked up everything, and I feel for the developers out there who have having difficulty, like, with development and all that, and I hope Skatebird's coming to Switch soon. But yeah, my thoughts on the Direct Mini Partner Showcase, I feel like it was, it was a pretty strong showcase. None of the games, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say none of, but most of the games were appealing to me. They came out strong with Monster Hunter. They ended strong with Ori. And in between, they had a few uh, bangers like Monster Hunter Stories 2. They had Balan Wonderland that I'm going to try out because I fuck with Sega and what they do. And I love 3D platformers. And it just looks like a very colorful, uh, whimsical type of game. Yeah. I thought I thought compared to the previous Direct Mini showcases, this was the best one for far. For, for, for oh my god. <laughs> By far. Whoa, this guy's having a stroke. Yeah, I really am. Bro. <laughs> Holy shit! I yeah, I was not. I was never feeling disappointed from any of the partner direct minis or things. I'm. I like. I like. I like all this stuff. I like everything. I I like to uh set my expectations really low so I don't get disappointed. And I feel like Nintendo fans have a trouble of keeping their expectations through the roof. You know what I mean? I think it's the trouble keeping their expectations low. They just come up with the craziest ideas and it's like <laughs> who like who even said this was gonna happen? Yeah, right. Well uh I'm I'm excited to see where all those games land and you know Hades and Ori go and get that. But who wants to talk about the three DS dying out? You know I'll I'll run let me run through the rest of these. Let's go baby. Alright let's go. Nintendo ends production on the Nintendo 3DS family of systems. It seems that production run for Nintendo 3DS is coming to an end. Nintendo has updated its Japanese website to include all units of the Nintendo 3DS, including 2DS, to have stopped production. Um, as of now, no more, no more new, no more new 3DS, no more new 2DSs. So, a few things we can infer from that is no new games for them. That's the most obvious one. Two. They're gonna be putting all their like focus now on the Switch, so that they'll be looking good for what Switch development in like the next year or two. Three, they're not planning on closing the eShop or online services. So like, if you have a 3DS, don't worry, they're not like killing it entirely. They're just not making new ones. It's not profitable for them anymore to make to continue producing new ones. But the 3DS itself is still gonna be around for a long time. Like even even we use online for like let's say like for like Smash or for so for glory for fun whatever like even that's still up. So like if you have a three DS, don't worry, you'll be fine for a little while, a long while. And unless anything rigs you want to touch on anything else, like that's that's been three DS. Take it. Yeah, I feel like this makes a lot of sense with the next uh news item on the list. So if you want to just jump into that. Oh yeah. August 2020, NPD, Switch was the best-selling platform since new, Ar- since new August hardware dollar sales record. It surpassed the $2,008 sales of the Wii in August, which is crazy. The Switch is... It's a powerhouse. That's such an understatement, too. The Switch is like a titan right now. It cannot be stopped. Nintendo doesn't even have to drop games anymore. Well, they, they, could just, they could just maintain the Switch's... Uh what they got right now and it could just keep selling off shelves and shit it doesn't even have to put out games they can put out bad games and still do well which perfectly segues way into kirby fighters 2 
What a mess this game was. It was like accidentally leaked. Then they released it at like 9 p.m. They shadow dropped it. And it's <laughs> basically just like a smashed platform 3D fighter with different bunch of Kirby's and different abilities. This is story mode. And I'm pretty sure I haven't bought the game and I definitely don't want to. I'm pretty sure if you've seen gameplay, um, Wrestler Kirby, Wrestling Kirby is broken. <laughs> <laughs> that sentence is funny. And the game is just janky as hell. So, like, I don't even want to dwell on this any longer than we already had. Kirby Fighters 2, if you're interested, you know. I, I hate how Nintendo resorts to Kirby for their weird ideas. And, like, <laughs> free, free like, trial games and shit. Like, I don't, I don't, I want Kirby to be, like, a mainstay for Nintendo. Meanwhile, it's being, like, Kirby Cooking or Kirby Battle Royale or some shit. Like, Kirby, chill. Kirby, Kirby, uh, Kirby plucks his nose hairs. <laughs> up next we have nintendo switch online reveals new snes and nes games for september so donkey kong country 2 diddy kong's quest yeah that that's fun that's really good i've never Mario. played the. i've never played the second donkey kong country but i played the first one for sure and i love that game and i heard the second one's the best out of the three yeah you're, you're gonna have you're gonna lose your mind so let's go baby mario super pit cross i've never played a pit cross game but me I will, either I was actually looking at it when I was playing um, uh, 2D All Stars in uh, Zelda the other day, like Zelda One. I was like, I should play this sometimes. So yeah, next for podcast, sure. you'll have you'll have a review. The Peacekeepers. I'll be honest, I could not care less about that game. You Some have- throwaway SNES game. <laughs> then you have Scat, <laughs> the cyber, the special cybernetic attack team. Wait, 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 wait! You just say Scat? Scat. It's called Scat. Oh shit! I need to drop everything I'm doing right now. <laughs> So yeah, that's, Psych! that's it for this, the NES Switch Online games. And then in addition uh, to that, unfortunately, you know, we don't get the good stuff. Yeah, Japan, I was about to say. Japan Switch Online, they they got a uh, Fire Emblem Mystery of the Emblem, which is like, you know, that's one of the classic JRPGs, like classic Nintendo JRPGs. I think this is the inception of Fire Emblem. Yeah. And so not to get that in the west i mean we could make a japanese nintendo account it's free like we could do that but we'd also have to pay another like 20 dollars a year for that just fire emblem like nah but Mm -hmm. that game does look clean it looks polished for a snes game like i really wanted that to come to the west maybe maybe you know we we probably just have to wait maybe in like the next few months or something i don't know know. maybe only time will tell i'll let you take the next one then i'll finish it off bet so Going back to uh, what we said previously on episode one of Gamer Goombas and Nintendo Podcast, Retro Studios acquired, uh, I think, a lead director for the game, if I'm not sure. Dope, Job or some dude. So uh, in in July, uh, Retro Studios added a longtime staffer from San- Sony Santa Monica, John Marcella, who worked on the most recent God of War games. He's now going to be working as an environment designer for Metroid Prime 4. So Marcelo was a designer of God of War Ascension, which is kind of a, I don't know, risky, risque game for the God of War series, but it's been involved with uh, the God of War for PS4 game, uh, also as a senior game designer. And so to have him be included in Metroid Prime 4 just gives me hopes for what's to come with that game. I don't know what else to say about it. What do you guys think? <laughs> Ooh, I've never actually played God of War. I know, I know, but like you know what? You know what? I, just, I can't buy every game in the world. Luke, Luke, Luke. I have God of War for PS4. I will, I will drop it off if, for one day. If you actually, if you... I have to drop off your Wii U again, so then we'll do a swap. Yeah, we'll do a swappy swappy. And then I'll let you know. But it looks good. It won. I think it won Game of the Year 2018. So it's one of my favorite games ever, to be honest. That game is just polished to a T. That game is fucking combat is crazy. The story is beautiful. The transition of the previous God of War is like, I didn't give a fuck about Kratos. And I was like tearing up at the end with Kratos and Atreus at the end. Like that shit was fire. And to have like the a lead level designer come to Retro Studios for Metro Prime 4, like, come on, baby, stop playing with me, baby. Oh my God. Sam is like, on the little, the baby Metroid and like a, like. Like a like a sick horse or something. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> my roommate up, freshman my roommate freshman year played God of War, so I've like never actually played it. But like, mm. I would literally just watch him play it while I was doing homework because like the gameplay and graphics 
were that good. Like it was just oh, yeah. so much fun to watch. Like it was it was like watching a movie with like yeah, how good the storytelling mention. and graphics were. Like it was phenomenal. Yeah, that game is fucking fire. And to have one of the dudes pull up for Metroid Prime 4 as an environment designer, as you were touching on, Brendan, like the the fucking visuals in God of War are breathtaking. Like one of the best games I've ever played visually. And so to have that caliber of talent as Metroid Prime 4 environment designer, like I'm excited for what that game is about to look like. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. And speaking of what Nintendo games are about to look like, Luke, why don't you take the next news story? All right, so this one is uh, interesting. Nintendo says they want to extend the Switch's life cycle and explore cutting-edge tech. And basically, it the whole article is what the title says, but there's been a lot of rumors. Like uh, Bloomberg reported that the Switch is looking into 4K stuff and that there's going to be an updated model or something of the sort coming mm. in 2021. So um, that's going to be interesting. I can't really talk more. We could just speculate and spend like forever, forever talking about it. We have no physical proof. We kind of just have to wait and see. I think if anything will drop, it will be after March of next year, right when the Mario stuff ends. And we'll probably be going into the Zelda anniversary. I think if they were to drop the new Switch, it would probably be holiday 2021 with maybe Breath of the Wild 2. And if there is a Breath of the Wild 2 themed Switch Pro, I've been saving my beans for it. Nothing (laughs) will stop me from getting it. I will kill people. You've been warned. And then, unfortunately, the last piece of news, which is just like, I'm not going to read the article. I'm just going to tell you loosely about it because I, I hate it so much. Cuphead and Arby's are teaming up. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, maybe you want to go get the meat sweats. You, you feel like you haven't had a heart attack yet. You know, you need to live life on the edge. So you go to Arby's, you get yourself the meat, which, like, the king meats or whatever it's called. It's like sweat meat sandwich 209. And, and inside, they have the Cuphead toys in the, you know, that's part of the sandwich. It's not a toy. You don't get it in a meal. You get the toy in the sandwich. And you just eat everything. No, but uh, Cuphead's making like kids' meal toys for Arby's. So good for Cuphead. I, uh, I just want I just wanted to add this news story because uh, yeah, I was trying to bring up the idea of like, do you guys remember any like video game toys or video game merch with like oh, fast I food? I did not even remember. Let me tell you, the most iconic thing there was, I think, it was the the Burger King Golden Pokemon cards. Oh, you forget? Tell that? me more. You don't remember this? Nah. This is old, 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 old. Like as old as as old as time itself. Burger King Pokemon cards. Nineteen ninety nine. Burger King had six Pokemon cards that were golden. Oh shit! Golden that you would have to get. I think it was Charizard, Togepi. I forget something we, else. We got a Jigglypuff. I, I'm looking at it now. These look rare as fuck. That was the biggest thing. Even we would, they would still talk about when even I was little. And now it's like, this thing came out in 1999, but like, I think I knew someone that had like a cousin that gave them theirs. I like knew someone like, you know what I mean? It was like the talk of the town. Mm. It was crazy. Like this shit was like making people sweat and nothing, nothing will ever top that. Like Cuphead's cool. And like, it sucks that they're with Arby's. That's just, it's just weird. You know what I mean? I was about to say, y'all fuck with Arby's. I've never been there. I don't. And I don't ever, but maybe we'll have to go to Arby's now. And you know, maybe we'll we'll record it and put like a little YouTube video out or something. Yeah, gamer Goombas visits Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanna go back to that uh I just wanna go back to the last article, exploring the cutting edge tech. I feel like all of this makes sense. Oh, yeah. Going back to uh, number six on the news, Switch was a best selling platform. So Nintendo wants to extend the Switch's life cycle, obviously, because it's selling boatloads. Like they want to keep this train running, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And going back to the God of War designer joining Retro Studios, like Nintendo knows there's a next gen coming, like November is coming. They want to compete with uh, PS5 and Xbox Series X with the 4K rumblings and all that. But they also want to improve their games with God of War designer pulling up to Metroid Prime 4. I don't know. They just like with the Breath of the Wild 2, it's definitely going to take advantage of the next gen hardware. I, I don't expect this to be a next gen leap. I expect this to be just a, a nice, like a, a really nice upgrade. Yeah. We're going to see Mario in 4K next year. You're going to be able to count every individual hair on his mustache. Yeah, that was really weird when Odyssey went like full HD with his hair. And now, no, just wait till the 4K. You play Odyssey on 4K on the 4K Switch, you're going to count every single nose hair, every single mustache hair, every single neck hair. You'll be able to see everything. I want to see uh, Mario's... Yeah! 
Alright, alright. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> edit, 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 edit. No, nah, leave in, leave in, leave in. No, no. <laughs> Speaking of Mario's <laughs> why don't we talk about the topic of the show? Alright, let's see, this is you two guys. I, I have not... Well, let's just say what it is. Mario 3D All-Stars. I didn't buy it. Maybe I will one day. But, uh, anyway, take it away, you two. Okay, so I've never played this game before, but I've been having wait, a pretty wait, good time wait, 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 hold so up, hold up. You've never played which one? Because there's the, the Mario oh, oh, 3D oh, oh, All Stars oh. is a. I forgot to game. mention. Yep, yep, yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I started out playing Mario 64. Uh, it's the only one I've had a chance to play so far. I'm like a quarter of the way through it. I'm I'm trying to play them chrono- chronologically because I feel like that's the best way to go through them. How, and ma- so how many far, stars you got? Like twenty, I want to oh, say. Oh, okay. You're you're way farther than me in Mario. Oh, 64. really? See, so I didn't. I jumped into Mario sixty four first for like the nostalgia trip, and I feel like the game holds up pretty well nowadays. Like this came out in nineteen ninety six, one of the first three D games ever to be created, and it's still like breaking barriers today. But yeah, I jumped into that real quick, and then I jumped into Sunshine. Not beat it, but I'm in there. I'm in Sunshine right now, and gotcha. then I went to Galaxy two. Not Galaxy two because that's it's not in the fucking package. But I went to Galaxy. I never played Galaxy, and I'm having a blast with it. Like, Mario Galaxy is Nintendo firing on all cylinders with Mario. I think that's the one I'm most excited to play. Because I've played Galaxy 2, but I haven't played the original. Yeah, I'm the same way. And so, just to see the evolution of how how weird and how zany Nintendo has been with the Mario series, and to see them, like, evolve with each game is pretty exciting in a weird way. Like, Mario 64 is traversal is very different than sunshine's which is very different than galaxies and to compare all those three like with how mario moves and with how he feels in each game is really cool the level design is like sunshine and 64 are very similar and like they have their worlds and they have their stars and galaxy is a little bit different how it takes an emphasis on one galaxy right and they'll make like two or three stars and then just move on to the next idea but it's like gotcha. polished and all of that. And so, I don't know. I've been, I had a I've been question for you, actually. If yeah, you've been correct. playing Sunshine, I know the camera, it's a little wonky because it's inverted in uh, the 64. How is that transfer into Sunshine? Because don't you use like the camera to control like where the hose goes? Yeah, so there, there are concessions that are made with this package because of the Switch's triggers and the analog style of GameCube controllers rather than like what we have now with the Joy-Cons. And so Uh the camera has always been an issue for me with Sunshine and 64 a little bit. I feel like Galaxy is like a kind of 3D, like zoomed (laughs) back kind of camera. So it's it doesn't have trouble with that. But Sunshine definitely does. Like, I think it's a personal issue. Like if you if you can't get used to the controls, I've totally understand it because inverted is weird. Like, why don't they have the option to change that? But I just got accustomed to it real quick. I don't know about you though, but yeah, like with the with the squirting of flood, right? You gotta mm-hmm. press the R trigger to squirt, like if to stay there and squirt like up or down, left or right, and then you use the Z R trigger to just like while you're running to squirt. It's kind of weird, but it doesn't. It's not. It's not a bad like alternative to what Sunshine was. Same with the Galaxy. You know how you need the Wii Mote to like shake. I don't know how to spin the spin attack in Galaxy, right? Yeah. Yeah. You still have that option with uh, the Switch version. You could use like the two Joy-Cons separately and shake and stuff. But they also map that spin attack to the Y button, so it's very uh, seamless. You know, like it's not it's not a bad port. That's good. Yeah. I haven't played that yet, but that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't had like big issues with the camera yet. I feel like like it's a little annoying because like I don't turn it as much just being like the way I'm playing. Like I'm not trying to do like crazy stuff that require like. Like I'm not I'm not running around the map that's requiring like camera angles to be moved all that often. So like because I'm not using it as frequently, I feel like I have like been slower to adapt to it, which is kind of annoying. But like it hasn't been like horrible so far. I was just curious how it like adapted for like actual gameplay mechanics when it was important then. I feel like for certain levels it's it's pretty wonky, but I think you'll manage. All right. Good to know. There's also something that I wanted to mention about mario as a whole so i just wanted to touch on like how odyssey whenever you get a moon or a star or whatever you get to keep exploring through the level right yeah but then 
64, 64 you get kicked back out you get jumped out even if you lose even if you like die in sunshine you get a star you get kicked out you want to go back in it, it brings up to the screen where you want to pick like what mission you want to go to in galaxy it's the same way like i feel like odyssey just streamlined that whole process and going back i played odyssey uh after i jumped into 3d all-stars and i was like damn we've come a long way for real I mean, yeah, like, when the whole design of these games is to, like, create maps that require such intense exploration, like, high level of mechanics to, like, fully navigate, Mm. when, like, you're being kicked in and out, it does kind of disrupt that process, which I do think, like, Galaxy, like, leaving you in there really helps, like, immerse you in it for, like, the situation better. And I feel like that's also true with, like, um, just, like, the way that, like, uh, Galaxy is designed as well. It has to do with the way the story is told, though, I feel like, because, like, it's it's a much more linear progression. Yeah. It, two stories, like, it does make sense for to, like, give you the option to, like, keep exploring, do this, do this, do this. You have to explore this, this, this to do this. Mm. So, like, I feel like that does kind of make sense, but it is, like, it, I feel like it makes sense why they kick you out in, like, 64. But I also feel like it, it wasn't necessary, and it definitely, like, does take away a little bit from the experience. Yeah, but it, it's sort of demeaning. Yeah, yeah. Like when I lose and when I, uh, and even if I get a star, I'm like, do I want to keep going or can I just shut it off right now? It just depends on the mood, to be honest, at the time. But I don't know. I've been having fun with the 3D All-Stars collection. I feel like there's certain improvements that could have been made to make this package way more enticing. But Nintendo knows that people are going to buy it. And with that exclusivity window to get it, like that's just enhancing that buyer's remorse even more you know yeah yeah so like one thing that i really wish they had like left in was like the ability for like the crazy glitches in 64 like i know some of the glitches are still possible and i actually did get the bob bomb trick in uh the first world Mm. like one time i actually managed to perform it and like that is cool that like they left in some of them but i feel like i feel like a big lasting appeal to that game is the like crazy ability to speed run it how like world records are still being set like to this day on the original code, which is just like insane. So I feel like adding it to a new port with a new console, like forcing people to try to replay that on like a Switch controller as opposed to like how it was originally meant to be played, like could like have created like an entirely new kind of speed running for the game and like brought back that community, which like I'm kind of upset about, but it is what it is. Yeah, we touched on that last episode about the difference of like we're the 64 version of the 3D All-Stars collection is like a Japanese port that takes out those types of traversal abilities and like those speed running tactics. And I feel like that I just I'm just puzzled why Nintendo picked that. I mean, it, um, like it's it's better for the game in and of itself, I guess, because it, it is theoretically a glitch like at the end of the day. But like, I don't think that like having a glitch in a game is necessarily bad because like skyrim's full of them and that's one of the best games for it you know what i mean Mm -hmm. mario sunshine had the coolest speed running strats in any game i think i've ever seen do you know how that worked or no there is a lot of there's a lot of flood tactics with like diving and shit i don't know yeah and like there's a lot of game breaking like walls and stuff that you could exactly the way the the way the original game was like saved on the cartridge was it actually just saved like if world one world two world three whatever it's laid out on a grid next to each other so you can jump between the Hmm. walls that separate the barriers between save states to like get to like crazy parts of the map that like you weren't able to access before like that's like an interesting way for them to save the data so like because of that they were able to be exploited and it's just like that's a cool feature that like you don't see very often you know because like that's a weird way of saving data in the first place but they did it like that and then you were able to like exploit it and use that to like create all new kinds of strategies like i think that's a really cool feature Mm -hmm. i'm confused on why nintendo took those implements out of i'm confused why they didn't put more care into the 64 port i'm confused on why galaxy 2 is not involved there's just some stuff that should have been there that's not you know what i mean yeah yeah and like to to listen and hear about the 4K like port on PC about Super Mario 64 and to see that we're still playing on 4 by 3 on the Switch, like I just feel yeah. like Nintendo could have done more. But I'm still playing it. I'm still having fun. These are three amazing games. And if you haven't touched these games before, I feel like this is a a good way to play them. I feel I like would... that was Nintendo's goal at the end of the day, though. I feel like that 
rebuilding these wasn't designed to give like the older players like a new yeah. way of playing them but to introduce a younger generation to these like sure. groundbreaking games and how like prove that they still last which is like kind of amazing for sure so like i think that's what they were trying to go for more and like i can understand that but still yeah. well there you go people mario 3d all-stars gamer goombas a nintendo podcast this is number two you know i don't know what i'm gonna name it but we'll find out later i hope y'all have fun listening to us uh rave and rant about nintendo for about uh, an hour luke brendan thank you guys for coming y'all have anything to say to the fans <laughs> out there thanks nice and good to be here I'll tell you that uh same and with that i hope y'all have a good evening good morning a good whatever you're having and keep on playing nintendo this is gamer goom is a nintendo podcast we're out baby